Hello everyone, my name is Yubnabius. I've been a chess player virtually all my life and I imagine many of you also come from chess. And I want to help you guys make sense of the game of Xiangqi. Now, earlier today I've been playing against the computer on Xiangqi.com and the way in which I managed to beat it was, I believe, something that could have been very instructive for when I started the game. As such, I want to share it with you. Now, on a side note, don't take the 2100 rating that this computer has too seriously. It was a number given it to it during testing. Uh, it knows how to play the game, but it has some weaknesses that I managed to exploit. And I believe that uh, this will be rather helpful in developing your game. I'll be giving some light comments. So let's get to the action and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so let's give this one a spin. Uh, for my first move, I'm going to move the cannon across the palace to this point. Uh, I'm not going to go too deeply into it now, but if you want me to explain openings or maybe even the very first move, let me know and I'll see what I can do. For now, let me just execute the move. Now, Black's first move is already a bit suspicious to me, I think, because other than just attacking a pawn of mine, um, it doesn't really do that much to the development of his pieces. Uh, for now, I'm just going to entice it into taking and see if it works again this time. Yeah, it took. Uh, I really don't like this move, by the way. Um, it doesn't do anything to uh, interrupt my pieces, to stop me from development. If anything, it will aid me in development because I can now attack it with tempo. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, this is actually a good move. Uh, of course, it does waste another tempo, but hey, the cannon was attacked, so it had to go somewhere. And secondly, this is a really good place for the cannon to be. Um, in front of my horse was a pawn. I could move it out of the horse's way, but now there's a black cannon. So black decides on a moment uh, for how long it stays in my horse's way. And also the elephant behind my horse is protected, but there is some kind of pressure and it might work in certain tactics. For now, let me just get on with my development. Uh, take the open file as, a, as uh, with my rook, because what makes more sense than that? And uh, we see a development move from black, finally. A uh, horse coming out of the way. And uh, having mobilized a part of my forces, let me also continue on the other wing, because my left rook isn't playing yet. So I'll clear the file first with my cannon. Next move, I'm probably going to move the rook over here. Oh yeah, Th this move I find terrible. Uh, I just mentioned that uh, this cannon was blocking my horse from moving forward. Now it's voluntarily clearing the way. And uh, it also means that black has just moved his best place piece again uh, to a place that is worse only for the sake of getting a palm. Uh, now I could of course worry I'm now three pawns down. Do I want to do anything to uh, consolidate to stop it from making it worse or should I put all my money into more development? And the answer is more development works good in the opening. I should keep accelerating. If anything it is black who should consider at some point should we maybe hit the brakes and do something about development. But I'm just going to continue. My rook is going to take the open file. Okay, this cannon is attacking my horse. I should run it out of the way and what makes more sense than forward and more towards the center. And a fourth pawn uh, he wants to have and I think this is utterly terrible. So let's do a bit of a comparison here. Of course, I am four pawns down now, but I would argue that I am way ahead in this position. And I'm talking in the sense of development. 
So let's do a bit of a move count to see how many development moves that we made. Uh, let me start with my horse on the left. Uh, I moved it out twice, and you would think that that counts for two moves, but I'm going to attribute it with three, because there should still be a pawn over here to move out of the horse's way. In order to get my horse to where it is now, I would need to spend three moves. However, that pawn was captured, so I only need to spend two on it. I'm going to give this horse three points worth of development moves. It kind of goes the same with the horse on the other side. Uh, it can move forward now. Uh, it wouldn't have been able to do it in such fashion had the pawn still be in front of its face. So I'm also giving that two moves worth of points. Now with cannons and rooks it's a bit more tricky because I move cannons out of the way of the secondary file to take it with the rooks. Just to keep the picture a bit clear, I'm going to say that uh, all the points go towards making the rook active. So on the right, I have a cannon out of the rook's way and I move the rook to the open file. So that gets two moves as points and on the left the same. So both of the rooks have two points and I'm going to attribute zero to my cannons, giving me a total of nine moves that I just spent on development. So what did black do? Well, there's a horse over here. Uh, the pawn is still in front of its face, so it cannot move forward. I'm going to give that only the single move that it made. Uh, the cannon that we still see in the black's camp, it does threaten my elephant, I suppose, but the, I'm not going to give it any points for clearing a file, because that file is already mine. If black is going to oppose it with a rook, I'm just going to trade. Uh, any horse that had gone forward would have to go back to so as far as development goes this cannon isn't really worth that much and as for the cannon that has been taking away all of my pawns that really isn't stopping any pieces of mine going forward it doesn't have any targets at the moment so I'm giving that zero so with four pawns behind I'm probably 8 tempi up, which is no small feat after just 6 moves. Uh, or 7 moves, uh, I stand corrected. After 7 moves, I'm up 8 tempi. Okay, uh, that said, now I'm going to have to come up with something tactical here. Both of my horses are active, both of my rooks are active. I need to uh, turn this advantage into something concrete. Otherwise, black is just going to catch up. Um, I feel that attacking black's developed horse makes sense. Uh, it is a bit tender and it is undefended. I can do that with my own horse or with a cannon. Both make kind of sense. Uh, I'm going to go for attacking it using the cannon. I'm probably sending my horses back up. Okay, no further attack needed. The horse has already fled. Uh, yeah, plenty of options here. And I think that here the central pawn is way too weak. It's ah, black cannot really defend it indeed. So uh, let me use my final cannon for that. I like my cannon on the right having a bit of pressure on the elephant. That might even lead to a checkmate. So stuff on the central file get pinned. So let me go for that. Okay, that move I really don't get. Uh, Black is not spending any effort in developing whatsoever. I guess it just wants to keep the pawn on the board and it threatened it uh, to uh, cross the river, which makes the pawn worth more points. But yeah, this is really going way too far. Uh, now I'm going to take the central pawn here and this cannon is going to be very annoying. Yeah, uh, black could have also moved the horse away, clearing the file, and then it wouldn't have been a check. But uh, a cannon staring into a king's face openly, that's going to allow for a lot of discoveries. So this is probably the best move. That said, black is in a heap of trouble here. Uh, 
these pieces are pinned, which also means that these cannot move at all. And because I control many open files and spaces behind it, it also means that Black is confined to his own territory and that left cannot really talk to right here. Um, now, with some pressure on the right elephant and also my horse that was already leaning to the right, I feel that attacking the right flank is the most obvious way of going forward. There's only the rook protecting that side and maybe this cannon over here can sometimes protect something as well. Yeah, going forward. Uh, yeah, the horse attacks my cannon now, but now if I run forward with my horse even more, I'm threatening checkmate. And you cannot even protect with your cannon on the second rank ever anymore because now you have two horses over there. Pretty sure this that this is just checkmating. Yeah, that kind of confirms it. Uh, when mate is inevitable, you'll always see that uh, computers are starting to make moves. But there is no way to protect this point. Uh, if Black moves his rook ahead, well, rather than just taking the rook, I can also deliver checkmate, taking the elephant on the right then. Uh, so now we see this desperate move from Black trying to delay the inevitable. Uh, there's a check, I guess anything wins, but let me just take it. Yeah, taking my cannon, but it's too late, and this is checkmate. And that's that. Okay, that went rather quick. Now... Let's get to the main takeaway from this game. I happen to notice that if people are new to this game, then they have particular trouble in how to play the opening or early middle game. And as such, just rather start focusing on material, grabbing pawns is a very easy prey and taking it from there. Uh, I think my quickest tip on improvement is stop worrying about getting behind in pawns and start worrying about getting behind in development. Then as you grow on, you will learn to balance the two a bit more. Okay, that was it. Thank you for viewing and see you again next time.